So I'm going to go over the Chile de Castro trial. I'm just going to give you some key excerpts where I think things went bad or good. I can tell you so we can get right to it. Chile has an almost impossible burden to get these convictions overturned. I'm going to mention something here. It sounds like someone is farting repeatedly in this trial. And farts do not get you very far. So let's just see if we can hear it again. I'll shut up. I know that's hard for me to do. Listen for the brr. Yes, I wrote that. And what is your basis for um, genetic abuse? Well, he could have been charged with battery on a police officer, which would have been more severe. But here is my earlier video. And uh, I said that based on Chile narrating his encounter with the cop, it was going to be enough to get him busted for resisting arrest. I think he's just walked himself into a conviction by narrating what happened. All right, so the the, bail, the marshal is pointing to a sign, no filming, and the judge is having none of it. There is a lawful order right there. Can you, can you turn off the phone, please? The one yeah, that's in I'm your just, hand. Just finish with my lawyer. He's on his way here now. I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. Sir. You already are. Okay, there's Rude. That is borderline contempt when she says, I don't want to be on your YouTube channel. You already are. You don't address a judge that way and look at her facial reaction. Awesome. No. I'm not gonna give him this guy though. I'll give him someone else. Now Chili says he doesn't want to give it to the marshal. He's gonna give it to someone else. No, no. they're gonna go to my marshal. That's a second potential contempt. And the judge said no and he did it anyway. He's a pig. He's a Excuse pig. Me? I said he's a pig. Okay. That permits you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. And if you don't want to apologize, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I apologize to the court, Your Honor. No, you can apologize to... They've done nothing to you. Actually, Your Honor, when you were here, you came over and gave me a directive for no reason to tell me what to do. Not true. The, court, the, the judge has already issued an order, no phones in the courtroom, and he pointed to the sign. I don't have any recording devices on me. What are you talking about? How much? What are you talking about? Another contempt. Sweet jacket. <laughs> I don't have anything on me. This is preposterous. That's true. This is preposterous, another contempt. Yes. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Mr. Mean, your phone, too. Oh. They're recording everything. <laughs> More arguing. They have, they have a media request. Right, and I'm, I'm not recording anything. Did the, your your guy here took my phone, so he's not, his phone's not on. Right. Your guy here. <laughs> oh. 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 Take the lawyer's phone, too? No, I'm not going to take your lawyer's phone. He's okay. an officer of the court. Did you hear that? Chili says, you can take my lawyer's phone. And she says, I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's an officer of the court. Did you hear that? We're officers of the court. We do get a lot of privileges. Let's get to, uh, he did not cooperate. And the, the cop really brought in some major testimony right here. Um, I told him seven times to face my patrol vehicle. I would stop that one and ask how he knew how many times. So he must have been studying his testimony. What were you looking at? Oh, I was looking at my police report. So you, your recollection is actually cloudy. You only can recall it because of what you wrote down at the time. And what you wrote down at the time could probably be in error. See, none of this is being challenged right now. I listened. I told him six times to turn around. He did not listen. It, was, it wasn't until I told him that he was going to go to jail. That was the consequence of not listening that he allowed us to handcuff. Okay. Did he cooperate with um, any of the officers present at the scene? No, he kept... Objection, lack of foundation. We don't have those officers here to uh, testify whether or not that is true. He's basically testifying as to what they thought and, and believe. I would have objected to this. Let's go to the body camera, which was really the piece de la resistance. Okay. And does this show the, the time that you activated your camera? Yes. This is authentication. It's similar to what you testified to earlier yes um, and you've had an opportunity to see this entire like uh, 12 and a half minute long video is that right yes does it fairly and accurately depict um the this is authentication get it into evidence the defendant on the date and time that we've been discussing yes i moved to admit and subsequently publish um the file label 468 underscore number sign one dot mp I don't know about the publication part. That would be for a jury to see the actual exhibit. The, the, the thing is on the screen already. You're looking at it. So it's being published already. 
But anyway, uh, that was the right move to get that admitted into evidence. That was crucial because now the judge can use it in evaluating the conviction. Let's uh, go to... Here's where we get to the backup and obstruction charges again. A videotape in and of itself is hearsay because it's just a recording, but he's authenticating what he said and it's him and it's the party to the case, the defendant. So you get around hearsay real quick if it's just basically, but you can't narrate. That's also an objection. Narrating is just talking. It has to be questions. Stay away from my driver. It's a lawful order. Back up or I'll detain you. Lawful order. No, you're not. Uh, we're getting into uh, obstruction and resisting. Basically, the, that's where these statutes get weird because how do you determine this? Is this a resisting charge or an obstruction charge? Could be obstruction, but it could be resisting, which is why these statutes really bother me. About the same obstruction. He's citing to Rodriguez versus United States, but that's not helping him right now. Here we go, officer safety, consistent with the Nevada cases. And he started making contact with the driver, your stopped uh, driver, um, that you approached him and asked him to back up. Yes. Objection leading. She's just basically testifying through him now. Anything within 21 feet, um, that suspect would be able to charge an officer without them being able to react in time. All right. And at that point in time, you were the only officer present, correct? Objection okay. leading. And when he began, or when the defendant um, failed to obey your command to back up, that's when you decided to engage him. Yes. Okay. More leading questions, guys. You automatically see it. Your police report, um, do you recall referencing the fact that he had due notice in your opinion of what you were planning to do? Okay. Yes, when I gave him four commands to back up those due notice. I would love. And at some point in time in the video, it was recorded, you told him that he is allowed to record, but he just needed to back up. Yes. Okay. She's just summarizing and, and basically leading questions. Not have notice as to the distance you wanted to back up. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, that's an interesting attack by, by the lawyer, Michael Mee. He's a very smart guy. He's going to now try to argue, well, okay, he's given due notice, but he didn't really know how far to back up. You in the academy said 21 feet because you could be attacked in half a second and you need time to react. But you never told Chile that. That's a great, great argument. Great point. Because remember, we're dealing with vagueness of statute. Approximately how long uh, were you issuing these commands then before you decided to take it? Great question. Uh, I've had the same problem with the delay part of the statute. What, what, how long is a delay? Approximately 15, 20 seconds.
Now think about that. You could be nailed after 15 or 20 seconds of noncompliance. Does that sound constitutional to you? And you recall in your police report uh, stating that you did not believe his intent was to harm you? Yes, I wrote that. Okay. Very nice point brought out by the lawyer there. What is your basis for? Oh, sorry. I'm going to mention something here. It sounds like someone is farting repeatedly in this trial. And farts do not get you very far. So let's just see if we can hear it again. I'll shut up. I know that's hard for me to do. Listen for the brrr. Yes, I wrote that. Okay. And what is your basis for reaching that conclusion? Well, he could have been charged with battery on a police officer, which would have been more severe. But I wasn't, I didn't think his intent was to hurt me, so I didn't try. With that. that actually hurts Chile, though, because now the cop looks like he's trying to be a little bit compassionate here, and the fart did not distract him. Let's go to where Chile says he's a public figure, which would hurt him on every defamation case he ever brings. Being branded a public figure under Reader Di Reader's Digest decision is uh, grounds for having to prove malice and recklessness on any defamatory statement. A knowing falsehood, knowing reckless statement, reckless disregard for the truth. I'm known across the country and across the world. Okay. I was obstructing, which from my understanding is a physical act. Sorry to interrupt you, Chili, but no, obstructing could be just, you know, non-compliant, staying stationary like those guys that are stop oil guys or whatever. To get in the way, he said that the driver deserves privacy. I believe my First Amendment rights are not up for feelings. I do not like that answer because um, he is using her feelings as opposed to his constitutional rights. And it shows intent now. I don't know that he really quite understood that. He's now broadcasting his intent. His intent is to get involved in this now. It would be much better if he had said he was mistaken. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not trying to invade on anyone's privacy. I'm just was just trying to film what I thought maybe be police brutality. And that's why I was there. But now he's saying, no, no, I have the right to do this. Well, that changes the context of those two charges. Yikes. I'm sure the judge got wind of that one. Oh, well, let's get back to the fart again. Sorry. I don't broadcast them all the time, but listen carefully. Another fart. <laughs> Here's where uh, Chile says it was an unlawful command. It won't have as much impact because he's not an attorney, so he can't offer those kind of opinions. But he could just simply say, you know, when you say an unlawful command, it sounds defiant, which is another problem. Goes to intent again. Can we swat any of the officers? Absolutely not. He was giving me unlawful commands. The, should not have been detained after I identified as a member of the press. The press do not have special rights, Chile. I know you guys like to think that, but they do not. Yes, there's freedom of the press. It's a First Amendment, freedom of expression, but it's all under the rubric and the umbrella of the First Amendment itself. That doesn't give you special rights. It does give you special privileges and defenses in a slander case, in all cases that I've seen. If he ever reached a hand out towards me, I wrestle and teach MMA and I have 30 years. So it's just a natural reaction as I'm retreating from somebody. If I may have put my hand up, as he said, as he testified himself, I certainly am a law abiding citizen. I don't break the law. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into all that extra detail. This is what we call filler. Um, it would be more along the lines of it was accidental, um, but it, not because of my trained MMA skills, it was accidental. You know, he startled me. He surprised me. Again, no willfulness. But this sounds kind of in the middle a little bit. You know, it's not helping him to say these things. I would not have tried to assault an officer under any circumstances. Okay, that's good. Is it possible that uh, during the interaction there was inadvertent contact between you and the officer? Great sure, question. He decided to go hands-on with me. Oh, that, see... The lawyer asked a great question, but Chile went too far with it. Uh, there was subtlety to what uh, Michael Mee was saying. He says, if there was an interaction, I like the choice of words here. Very well done, very skilled. And But Chile's using the term hands-on, which takes a completely different image now of combat. It would be more like, yeah, you know, I mean, I was nervous. The guy grabbed me. The cop was grabbing me. I was afraid that he was, you know, what was he going to do to me? I'm going to get beat up. 
who's given me unlawful commands. And See, that sounds defiant again. And there's absolutely no reason for it. I was willing to comply with anything he asked within reason. Within reason, you see that also. Now, I like that Chile said that because one of the problems with these statutes is they're vague, but it's not really his call to make that. It's his call to comply and then bust the cops for going overboard later, but he's ba he's basically kind of battling with the cop. Listen for, listen for the fart. Oh, fuck. Which, that's what press people do. We have lots of cameras on us. And that was a big one. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it's the chairs, but let's just listen one more time. Let's get a replay on that one. A master class in passing gas. Lots of cameras on us. Uh, and <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay. Rich Castro, PCD, and the problem with the argument that your attorney makes is it completely fails to consider. The safety of the officer and the safety of the driver. The officer doesn't know who you are, and the driver doesn't know who you are. And you don't have any right to interfere with that officer doing his investigation and deciding if he wants to issue a ticket to this driver. And you are also don't have any business approaching the driver. The driver didn't ask you for help. It was interesting. The DA went for a basically I thought a very mild punishment, which is what I thought he would get originally. Let's listen to what she's offering. The sentencing, I would ask um, the uh, defendant to enter and complete a, um, an impulse control class. I would ask that the impulse court control. a $500 fine or the equivalent in community service. I would ask that the defendant be ordered to stay out of trouble. Um, for the pendency of the case, um, and I would ask for a 90-day suspended sentence, and then talk as to each count for one concurrent. Another fart. Um, engaging in the wrongdoing, it seems to me from observing him in the video that he wants, he wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to get into an altercation with these officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom today pigs. He called me, and he's not his head up and down. I so apparently he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. Oh. All right, please stand up, sir. Are you finished with your request for credit for time, sir? Um, Giving a thumbs up and nodding his head. Well, just emphasize your honor that Mr. Castro, please stand. I hereby sentence you to 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count one, 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count two, to run consecutive for a total of 180 days in custody. Look at him gripping his, his hand right here. Sentence suspended or? Oh, no. I'm going to start right now. So there you have it. Um, the, uh, the things he did when she was looking at sentencing him was terrible. Um, you know, I think that's what, I think that's where the sentence came down harsh because the DA wasn't looking for a harsh sentence. I think he could have walked uh, from any jail time, but he would have, you know, got a conviction against him. Okay, fine. But thumbs up and, you know, basically confirming the judge's suspicions that he likes these interactions and just trying to basically have at it with the cops and he hates all police. Well, now, you know, she looks at this as willfulness, I think. I mean, I don't know, I'm not her. And then she sees what he did in the courtroom to her own staff, who are police. Uh, so in her mind, now she's kind of dropping the hammer. Uh, not much uh, her defense, his defense lawyer can do about something like that. Anyway, hope you liked the video. And let's see what my prediction was. Those habit evidence. Uh, he has a propensity to uh, incite the cops to not comply with them. And that's exactly what the judge said in the sentencing. She says, you just hate the cops. Boom. I got that one right. You know, uh, there's the willfulness requirement. Yep. The, the police officer said he refused to comply. I must have told him, what, five or six times. And I'm filming the cops, but it sounds like the cops gave him lawful orders and he refused. 
That's what the cop testified to. I gave him lawful orders and he refused. Probably on body camera. Exactly. What did they do? They brought in body camera to nail him. Body cam, which is going to be used against him as well. Yep. Did he fail to give them uh, who, his, uh, the proper ID? Did he refuse? They didn't say that. Just to ID, you know? Did he slow them down and make them repeat the same question 40 times? Well, the cop said it was like six times for, uh, you know, move back and a few times for five times for, you know, cuff him up. they are hard charges to beat. And uh, my, my, my prediction is just based on his pattern and practice, he's going to get convicted of at least one charge, probably two. And uh, he's going to then get uh, probation where he's going to have to now comply with a lot of things or he's going to be back now looking at real jail time. And here's where things can get really bad for him. They could run those misdemeanor uh, sentences consecutively. And what did they do? I went out and said early on, way before there was a trial, I analyzed over 200 of Nevada statutes. The Nevada Supreme Court has said these are statutes are constitutional. I don't think they are from a California perspective. I think they're overly broad, overly vague. They use subjective language. It's not easy to determine. But the Supreme Court of Nevada broke from the Ninth Circuit and said, officer safety is a paramount concern. And that's what the DA went after. That's what that police officer testified to, officer safety. So it goes right into the grounds of whether or not it was going to be appealed on those issues. They would win. The appellate court is bound by the Supreme Court's decision. So any appeal there is basically a dead letter. Then they'd have to petition the Supreme Court. They'll just reject it, I think. Then it has to go to the Ninth Circuit, federal, and then try to overturn a state law that they say contradicts other cases within the circuit. 